<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. This week is gonna be pretty fun because I'm attempting a project to build that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, a book nook. They're really popular on YouTube. A lot of makers have made them, but what I haven't seen is a Dungeons and Dragons themed one. It's such a perfect build for D&D &D because you can build one that goes with all your D, D books. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I thought about different themes, like maybe like a beholder's lair, a mind flayer thing, maybe just like a typical dungeon, like a cave. There's all sorts of really iconic, cool things you could do to represent D, D in this form. But when I saw that the theme for loot this month was basically all around the Underdark, and I saw some of the models, it clicked. I'm gonna do an Underdark themed book nook for Dungeons and Dragons. I have two models on the 3D printer, a drider and a hero to set the scene. I'm gonna cut up some, I think 3 16 uh, hardboard to make a box that is the exact same dimensions as the D&D book so it can fit nicely with that collection. And I'm gonna hopefully come up with a, with a cool finished piece. Okay, that was a pretty successful and productive like half an hour. I kind of just cut in some rough shapes of all these stalactites and stalagmites and glued everything to one side. And the hope is that uh, this side will be able to go on and look okay. The shapes are really rough because I'm not planning on just leaving them as foam. Like this foam even has that waffle cone texture on it. I didn't really care too much about that because I'm now gonna cover all of this in some modeling compound to kind of like blend it all together and make it look more like rock. I cut in a little groove at the bottom of this piece of foam. That's so I can drill a hole and run some lights through there. So far, so good. I'm three hours into this and it is coming along nicely. I got a fair bit accomplished. I just gotta let this sculpt the mold. Let's well, not sculpt the mold, it's Geek Gaming modeling compound. I gotta let it dry. On this side, I can blend it nicely to the side panel, but this side, obviously the panel's not on. So getting this edge perfect, that's a little bit difficult. I have a feeling once I assemble it, I'm gonna need to do some touch-ups. I'll probably let this dry for like another 20 minutes or so, then paint the thing out.
All right, two slight problems here. One is that this MDF with just a coat of black paint has warped a fair bit, which is surprising to me. I didn't think that'd be enough moisture to do that. This here is not 90 degrees anymore. I don't know if that's how it actually went on originally, if it was from the sculptor mold drying or what. The combination of those two things is gonna create a very bad scenario when I go to put this together. Now, I will be able to force it together and true it up. It's gonna require a lot of force and it's just gonna be a pain in the butt. So one way I can, you know, make it a little bit easier later is if I true up this 90 degree corner here. So I need to cut that. It's really tricky to kind of do. So I'm hoping I can just use this as a guide to cut it at the proper 90 degrees. Uh, I don't have clamps big enough to hold this in place. So I'm going to have to very awkwardly do this and hope for the best. Now that has alleviated some of the problem. The rest I'll have to force when I assemble it. Also, this is kind of out that way. I gotta let this dry a lot more before I can go on to painting it. So I'm gonna paint the minis while I wait. This seems like the most appropriate time to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Loot Studios. They're a monthly membership service that gives you access to a ton of themed miniatures that you can print at home on your 3D printer. The theme this month is Expedition to the Underworld and it's full of cool Underdark style minis that are great for Dungeons and Dragons. But if you're not a gamer and just like painting display models, well, they also make all the files available in 75 millimeter scale. The models come pre-supported, making it super easy. Now, real talk for a second. There's a lot a lot of companies providing monthly models for at-home printing, but Loot is one of my favorites. And that's because they make some of the most detailed and dynamic minis you're gonna find, and their service is all accessed through their own website. As a member, you just log in and you can grab whatever files you need or want. The system is super user-friendly and easy to access. Now, if you haven't jumped on the at-home resin printing thing yet, now is as good a time as ever. Resin printers have become very affordable and easy to use, and with pre supported files from companies like Loot, there is really very little barrier to entry anymore. A small investment in a printer, supplies, and a service like Loot will very quickly pay for itself if you're printing and using a lot of models. The future is now, folks, and companies like Loot are doing their part to make this technology both fun and approachable. I'll put a link in the video description for more info on Loot and this month's bundle so you can check them out for yourselves. Thanks so much, Loot, for helping me bring these videos to the community and my audience. Your models are truly inspiring and a pleasure to work with. Just did a pretty slap dash paint job on this thing. Mixed in a bit of like aqua and purple and stuff to give it some tonality, but I didn't do a wash and I kept it a little bit lighter than I actually want it to be. And that's because once I put this side thing on, it's gonna be pretty dark in there. Same goes for the minis. I just did really quick paint jobs. Didn't make them too fancy. I didn't even paint the front of this guy cause you won't see him. But I wanna put some lights in this thing. And I actually got this pack of lights from Amazon. And it's full of these string lights on little battery holders. It was actually a fantastic deal. I'll put, put links where you can grab them. My plan is to put one here covered in some cobwebs, one up here that's hidden so you don't see the string, and one down here. And then I'm gonna end up filling some, putting some resin in here and hopefully get some bioluminescent glow. So now I gotta find a way to get all these lights that I want in and kind of hidden. Let's do this.
right, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, and this is where I got after the first day, and that's pretty good progress. Last minute, right at the end of the day, I decided to apply some gloss gel to cover these lights and mix in some kind of bright inks. This was sort of to diffuse the light, uh, even though there's gonna be stuff covering them. I was still kind of also worried that you'd be able to see this stuff, and this kind of just hides the wiry mess a little bit better without totally obscuring the light, so I'm pretty happy with it. For this area here, I want this to be like the Drider's cave lair entrance, so I'm gonna use some Halloween spider webs. Now, rather than buying one of those big bags of spider webs and having to store it after only using a little bit, I saw at the dollar store, they had these tiny little individual baggies of spider webs, which is like, the perfect packaging for hobby needs because you can just pull it a little bit at a time and it stores away really nice. To attach the spider webs, this is gonna be tricky. If I use like a PVA glue or something, it's not gonna hold it instantly enough and I wanna really stretch these. If I use super glue, I'm just gonna end up gluing my fingers to spider webs and getting it stuck on here and probably pulling off paint in the process. So I think what I'm gonna do is use some of this Super 77 spray adhesive. This stuff stinks, it's, it's nasty to work with, but what's great about it is that you spray it on, it becomes really tacky, I'll be able to just hopefully press the spider web into it and then it dries not tacky afterwards very quickly so the whole inside of this thing won't be a sticky mess. There we go. Quite good, actually. Now it's time to place these minis. Clamps at the ready. It's time to glue this thing up. I'm gonna use some carpenter's wood glue to get a good strong bond around the perimeter, but I'm also gonna use some hot glue just to get a quick bond on the foam because I need to kind of force some of these into place. I'm a little bit concerned. This is painted, which means I'll be gluing to paint. It's not making me feel great, but it is what it is. Oh. One more clamp, I need another clamp. That worked out pretty decently. I did screw up when I was cutting it up here and I cut into the sculpture a bit. That's okay, I just carved out more of it and actually made that part of the shape. Since I knew I'd have to fill in some of this with some of that uh, modeling paste anyway, I just did the same thing here. I just gotta touch up some of the paint on it and then I can uh, get to masking off and pouring this resin. I went out and I bought some Easy cast. This is a notoriously easy resin to work with because you can mix stuff into it without having any kind of adverse reactions. It actually specifically says that you can mix in acrylic paint, oil paint, pigments, whatever. The only bad part about this kind of resin is that it takes a long time to cure. I'm gonna have to wait like 24 hours minimum for this to be done. And that is the trade-off with resin that 
is dependable. That's the downside. As you can see, this is in a bin. As soon as I poured the resin and turned the cameras off, uh, <laughs> a kind of bad time unfolded. I looked at the painter's tape that I used to dam up the resin pour and I thought to myself, you know, it was pretty smart to use painter's tape because it's not gonna pull off any paint or damage this surface because it's not that sticky. But because it's not that sticky, it might not actually hold the resin long enough for it to cure. If you use painter's tape quite a few times to dam up resin, but usually it's like the five minute epoxy resin that is thick and cures so fast that the tape doesn't need to hold long. This needed to hold very liquidy resin for a long time. And sure enough, it started to leak. I kind of got to work masking it off better and did manage to stem the bleeding, so to speak. But it was pissing resin out the back. If you may remember, I drilled a hole in the back for the wiring. I did fill that hole with hot glue, but I guess there was a little spot where it didn't seal. And it was just pouring out. Trying to get it to stop was very, very difficult. I tried hot glue, but hot gluing a hole that is covered in liquid resin, just, it just wasn't working. Eventually I was able to get some tuck tape on it uh, to dry areas and stop the, you know, loss of resin. I decided to leave it in the bin just in case it leaked more, which it didn't, thankfully. So that's good. I also lost a lot of resin, so the water level went way down. All that hot glue and uh, gloss gel that I had put on, the lights on the bottom that looked pretty good before the resin, actually all of a sudden didn't look so good with the resin on it. It was like this weird effect where putting the clear resin over it took away the opaqueness of the, you know, the, the gloss gel and made it very clear and you could see the wiring very clearly. And so I decided to pour some more resin in to build up the volume again and mask that kind of ugly look. And when I did that, I decided to mix in more colorant to obscure your field of vision, which I believe, you know, like it definitely very clearly obscured it and you can't see anything anymore, it looks solid, but it did minimize how much light is going through. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but I think it'll still be okay. Let's get this masking tape off. You know, the tuck tape worked really good for holding the resin in and it didn't damage anything. So in the future, I'll just use that. I'm quite nervous how this is gonna look. Okay, maybe not too bad. It's really rough. So I think I'm gonna sand it and put a clear coat on it. Definitely no longer as translucent as I would have liked. Yeah, it's too bad you can't see any of the light coming through there, but it is what it is. I think it's pretty cool. Come on, for a quick two-day improvised build, it turned out pretty neat. My only real regret is this water. I either should not have mixed in so much colorants or just maybe I should have left the water out entirely. It probably would have looked even cooler if I had just had a bunch of glowing webs. Despite that, it's still really neat and I'm really happy to have finally tried my hand at a book nook. I just, just kind of kind of love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below. Of course, if you want to grab some of these models, don't forget to check out the sponsor Loot Studios. If you want to grab any supplies to do your own book nook or whatever hobby miniature needs type thing, check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page where I list and explain all the stuff that I use regularly and shopping through that page helps fund videos like this one. 
And if you get a lot of value out of these videos that I make every week, the best way you can help me keep making them is by supporting the channel on Patreon. I really, really want to say thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. It means a lot. It allows me to do this. So thank you. And to anyone else who's maybe considered joining, I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it for this week, guys. Cheers. <laughs>